So we are continuing with our Show It Paint It series. And today we are looking at a figure that was included in a game called Mythic Battles Pantheon. And this was done by Mythic Games and Monolith Games at the time. I think they've, they've since separated. But, uh... So I'm not sure if we're going to see anything else for this game. Is there there was talk of doing another version. They did it like a 1.5. It, well, it was a Kickstarter. But I don't know if we're going to see anything after that. Because the companies have went their separate ways. And I think the game Mythic Battles belonged to Mythic Games. But I think the mechanics and things were done up by Monolith. So, uh, And I think Monolith is, if I'm correct, is the one that's doing... Uh, the Batman and uh, uh, Joan of Arc. Mythic Games, uh, they've done another Kickstarter, but I can't remember what, uh, which one that they, they're doing now, which one they kept. But anyway, this was one of the large figures of Atlas. The game was about uh, kind of a post-apocalyptic battles of the Greek gods. There was some apocalypse that happened in the Greek world. Uh, so... There was these, the gods were battling each other for these things called Umphala, which was to give them strength. And, uh, it was actually a pretty big, you know, pretty big Kickstarter at the time when it, when it came out. Um, I do remember that. Um, but once I got the game, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I kind of never got around to playing it, so I got rid of... I got rid of my, my miniatures and stuff, uh, and I decided to keep this one, though, this this large uh, miniature of Atlas, because, I don't know, Atlas is always one of, the, one of the ones that has always fascinated me among the Greek titans. And so, basically, I'm just going to show you guys how I painted him up. Uh, I may... I don't think I put up a scale thing, but I may see if I can find something to show you guys his scale compared to like other miniatures you might use as a giant. Okay, yeah, so Monolith actually did, uh, looks like they did Conan and Batman Gotham, Gothic City Chronicles. Uh, and of course Mythic Battles. Now Mythic Games, because I'm looking this up. I think Mythic Games is actually the one that has, that would have Joan of Arc. Let me double check this. Uh, okay. There's a lot of, you type in Mythic, obviously you get a lot of different things. So, if I go to Mythic Games, they have Time of Legends. Solomon Kane, Reich Busters, and Super Fantasy Brawl. Which is very interesting because they don't have Batman Gotham City Chronicles in here. That's actually under Monolith Games. So, yeah, this is pretty interesting. Uh, I know this guy, who is this? Leo Leonidas, the guy that does the kind of the front man for Mythic Games. He had something to do with the Batman Kickstarter, but uh, maybe that was like their last collaboration. Because the Batman Kickstarter is actually now part of Monolith. And they have Conan and then Mythic Battles Pantheon. So I think they just did like a 2.0 with the Batman Kickstarter. But uh, they haven't put out anything since then. Mythic is actually doing more of its own property, so... Uh, you know, these things like Solomon Kane, Joan of Arc, these are all their own property, Super Fantasy Bra. But I don't think we will see more, maybe we won't see any more Batman through Mythic. So, I don't know, I'm still a little mixed up, but this is actually, Mythic Battles Pantheon is actually showing now that it's still with Mythic Games. So let's take a look at Atlas. So, we are going to open the box and take a look at Atlas Painted Figures. And 
remove him out of his plastic. Make room. And there he is. This is the painted version of Atlas from Mythic Games, the Mythic Battles Pantheon line. You can see the figure and the base. He's kind of linked over, so it's kind of hard to uh, see exactly how tall he is. I'm imagining he was linked over, le leaning over because they were supposed to, maybe they were considering putting a globe or the world on his shoulders, which is, I thought, was what Atlas was struggling under. Here he just kind of has a net, but nothing on his back. He almost looks like King Conan, to be honest with you. All right, so, but we are, I do want to do some kind of scale. So let me go get a regular miniature and put him besides Atlas. Okay, so you can barely see Crixus here next to Atlas. And obviously, if he was standing straight up, you'd even have, we'd have even a bigger uh, difference in the scale. Although, I, I think this is a very good scale for a giant. Unlike that, that massive thing that they did with uh, Kings of War. Which was just totally unusable. Uh, so, I actually, this is kind of like the way I like giants to be depicted. You see there. Now, let's compare Atlas to some other giants. This is a... Uh, a Fomorian from the uh, TSR miniatures or Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. So that's Atlas against the Fomorian there. Who scales up pretty good and he's actually leaning over himself. So I wonder if that's something with the uh, production process where they, they need to lean them or bend them over when they're doing these types of giants. Because that's kind of odd that they both are kind of like that. So this is called a Fomorian, which was basically like a Irish or your Scottish Giants versus Atlas. And next up, we will bring in an old Mage Knight. I think, was this an Ice Giant? I don't know what the specific name of these were. But again, he's also bending down. Kind of has his hand on the ice like that. Either way, I think it would make for a titanic battle between the two. And then you kind of have Crixus right here in the middle. But I didn't paint this, obviously. These, these used to come pre-painted from the Mage Knight game. So there you go guys, that is Atlas from the uh, Mythic Battles Pantheon game by Mythic Games. Take care and God bless.